So hello and welcome back. Now what we have in the essentially continuing with the with the same text basically. If you are and, and I and I'm doing essentially these courses in such a way that um, essentially all of these courses that I hopefully can keep doing that they can be used for anybody to generally essentially to use these courses to to learn mathematics essentially basic mathematics in a fun and uh, effective way basically and foundational way otherwise if you are a student of the ncrt um of the of of the of essentially a student from india and if you're if you're on the ncrt board then of course this would be your um, your essentially your standard education and of course you have to do the same now if you're not if you're not a student from India and if you're just um, learning mathematics for whatever purpose now in these lines of in these NCRT books there are things that are first of all they are fun secondly they are interesting and thirdly they are um, useful for many different types of purposes meaning if you know them if you can do them if you understand them you can i mean the little problems that you have in your day-to-day -day life you will be able to solve them very easily okay now for example let's say that a bus started its journey and reached different places with a speed of with a speed of um, 60 kilometers per hour the journey is shown on page 14 so the journey essentially goes from for example point a essentially to point b to point c d and back to a so that's essentially a bus route essentially what buses do they start at one station and then they keep going around the town they go around the town and then they come back to the same point i mean normally what that's what they do right so now what you want to do is essentially find the total distance for essentially covered by the bus from a to d meaning from here all the way up to here and then find the total distance covered by the bus from d to g from some point to some next point um, to some point after that point and then find the total distance covered by by the bus if it starts from a and returns back to a and then can you find the different the, the difference of distances from c to d and d to e right so this is a simple problem about, that involves basically only addition and subtraction but then there is other concepts that you might find interesting for example the 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 the, 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 um, the um, concept of speed for example and what what does it mean to say 60 kilometers per hour and so on and so forth right now let's see how we can solve this problem so first of all the bus essentially goes from let me draw the essentially the the the, the, the map on the on this page okay so now the first thing that we want to find here is the total distance covered by the bus from a to d right from here all the way up to here the total essentially this is part one and this is number one part one total distance total distance from from a to a to d right you want to to calculate the total distance covered by the by, by the bus from a to d right okay so now the total distance from a to d you could you could think of that as the distance covered by the bus from a to b plus the distance covered by the bus from b to c and then the distance covered by the bus from c to d if you add all of these together that would be the total distance from a to d right so of course sometimes essentially in examination you have to write these down depending on your what is expected of you in, in an examination of course you have to do all of those things meaning that for example to answer the question first you have to you have to write for example something like answer and then you, you would write for example the total 
distance for example covered covered by the bus for example by the bus from a to d is equal to the total distance from a to b plus the total distance from b to c from plus the total distance covered c to d for example so you would have to write all of that down basically very um very um neatly and in a neat and clean way sometimes of course it is useful meaning that sometimes to organize your thoughts you would you would you would actually have to do that in order to understand your own thinking and then use that in whatever it is that you want to use them but assuming that you understand the essentially my logic that I'm, the, the logic that I'm using, which is essentially the distance from A to D would be a, the distance covered from A to B plus the distance covered from B to C plus the distance covered from C to D, right? So that is essentially, for example, in this case, it would be the distance from A to B as I have uh, specified over here is is essentially 4170 kilometers and the unit is kilometers the unit is important then from b to c would be 3400170 excuse me 3410 3410 again in kilometers then from C to D, 2,160 kilometers, right? And, of course, you have to make sure that essentially whatever it is that now I'm going to essentially add these together, right? Right, add, for example, all of these numbers I'm going to add together and then I'm go over here I'm going to write kilometers in total, right? But then one thing that you need to take into consideration is that I'm 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 I mean logically I'm allowed to add these together only because all of these numbers are in kilometers. Meaning that, for example, if I to, if I ask you, for example, what is, for example, you have two oranges in this room, five oranges in the other room. How many oranges do you have in total? Then you could simply add the number of oranges, two two oranges, and for example, let's say five oranges there. Two plus five would be, for example, two oranges and five oranges, right? Add them together, that gives us seven oranges. So this is allowed. But then, but then suppose that I suppose that you have two oranges in this room five apples in the other room and then of course it doesn't even make sense for me to ask how many apples do you have in total so so let's say that you have for example five apples and you have two oranges right so the only thing that i can that i understand from this situation is that you have five apples in total and you have two oranges in total but then, of course, it doesn't make sense to add these two together, meaning that apples and oranges you cannot add together. It just doesn't make any sense because an apple is not an orange. They cannot be categorized together, right? And in the exact same way, I'm allowed to add these together only because <coughs> only because the the units are the same. Otherwise, I would not logically be allowed to add these together meaning that suppose that for example i have i have basically this situation over here let's say that i have 2170 for example kilometers right then i have for example i don't know 250 meter and then i have for example 55 centimeter right and then so this is the distance covered from, for example, some A to B, some B to C, some C to D, for example. The first one is, is essentially 2,170 kilometer. It's in, it's in kilometer. 
the second one is in meter the, the third one is in centimeter so of course I cannot add these two these these three together because essentially a kilometer and a meter are different things they cannot be added together right of course it is possible to calculate the total distance covered but then that's provided that I first essentially convert all of the units that I find here to one unit unit to one single unit basically meaning that I suppose that I take a look at my numbers and then I decide based on the shape of the numbers based on the number of digits that each number has and so on and so forth I decide that essentially these numbers must be essentially in the case of these numbers I'm going to convert everything to meters so then 250 remains as it is because it's already meters 270 kilometers converted to meters that would be 2170 and then for the kilo if I multiply it by a thousand I have three zeros over here so that's 2,170,000 kilometers. So that's zero, zero, zero. And then for example, let's write this in a better way. So that's 2,170,000 in meters, right? The second number is 250 meters. So that's 250 meters. The second number is in centimeters. So, in order to, to convert that to meters, I'm going to divide by 100. And of course, we have already, we already know how to do that. But then if, you, if, you, if you're sure that, essentially, if you're certain what, what, what you're doing is math, mathematically correct, you can do that without calculation. Otherwise, do do the calculation, okay? So, I know that... For example, um, let's say let's make this for example a uh, 500 5,000 for example 5,000 centimeters, which would be essentially a, a 50 meters, for example, right? So divide this by 100. 5,000 divided by 100 that would be a 50, so that would be essentially a 50 meters. And now I can add all of these together. And write for example 0, 5 plus 5 is equal to 10, 1, carry over, 1 plus 2 is equal to 3, 0, 7, 1, and 2, and in meters, right? So now the number is 2,170,300 meters, and then of course now you can write it in kilometers, meaning that now you can divide this for example by 1,000, that would be 2,170 um point for example three zero zero kilometers right meaning divide the same number by essentially by a thousand and then add a kilo right so that would be essentially um, that would be essentially two thousand one hundred seventy point three zero zero or you can you can even write it as two thousand one hundred seventy point three kilometers Keeping the two zeros here depends on other things, which is not important right now. You can, for now, you can just simply forget about the zeros, okay? So, so this is about the fact that, essentially, the fact that you need to, of course, first make sure that all the numbers that, are add, that you're adding together that they have the exact same units, meaning they, they, they actually represent the exact same things, and then you can add them together, right? So now that you understand that you're actually logically allowed to do this operation, and that is, of course, very important in mathematics, I mean, generally important in mathematics, that when whatever the operation is that you're doing you have to logically understand it if if you understand that logically you're allowed to do something then do it 
otherwise you have to somehow make sure that make sure that 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 that, that operation whatever it might be it's logically possible to do so because if 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 there is something that you're not supposed to do logically and if you do it then of course the whole thing will be wrong right so it doesn't make any sense to do so so then if you do the the, the addition zero six plus seven is 13 14 one carry over one two six and seven and then you have four plus three is equal to seven plus two is equal to nine and then the unit is kilometer so that means that the total distance covered from a to d is is for example nine thousand seven hundred forty kilometers right now of course you can write this in meters you can write this in centimeters you can write this in even million but it doesn't make makes make any sense to <coughs> to write this number in for example in meters because it's not i mean it's not customary to to do so because if you told anybody that for example the distance from the this the essential the distance from for example new delhi to karnataka is for example two million i don't know seven thousand 500 for example meters the person is not going to be able to make sense of your number but then meaning that essentially the, the distance between two cities if it's around for example a thousand two thousand kilometers then it's better to give that essentially to express that number in kilometers itself right but then by the same logic essentially if there is a very tiny distance for example a couple of millimeters then if you then then of course that distance has to be expressed in millimeters it doesn't make sense to express that meter that distance in kilometers then the number essentially becomes something that people don't understand right so in the exact same way essentially you have to choose the same the, the 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 appropriate basically prefixes in the si system in order to express your numbers meaning the as long as you're talking about distance the base unit is meter but then sometimes you use the prefix kilo if if the distance is too way too large sometimes you use essentially no um prefix at all meaning that it's if it's a couple of meters you would say only for example five meters then there is no prefix required if it is a small distance for example something like a couple of centimeters then of course you, you would use centimeters meaning you would use the centi prefix if it's smaller than centimeter then you would use for example the milli right the milli for example five millimeters two millimeters thing that uh, essentially like that and of course there is smaller than millimeter meaning that for example if then for example if it's way too smaller than than a millimeter meaning that if you were to look at that that distance you would have to enlarge it a hundred times two hundred times or if you had to look at that distance under a microscope or something like that then you would use for example micro the micro is also for example one of the which is of course which has no application here but then for example in physics you would use mark micro micro means dividing by a million milli means dividing by a thousand for example or you could even make it smaller make it nano for example nano means small in, uh, essentially dividing by a billion and so on and so forth okay so that that's basically the first part of this question and then the second part is for example the total distance covered from from d to g which essentially from here all the way up to here which again you can use the same the same essentially logic to solve the problem the total distance covered by the bus if it starts from a and returns back to a so starting from a returning back to a again again you can use the same logic meaning that you have to add a to b b to c c to d and so on until you get to a basically right 
and then if you were to essentially find the difference between find the difference of of the distances so the part four of this question you want to find the difference you want to find the difference between the this between essentially distances from basically from C to D and basically D to E, right? So the distance from C to D is already given it's 2160 kilometers so c to d the distance is 2160 kilometers and the distance from d to e is 8140 so d to e is basically 8140 kilometers right and now you you want to find the this the, the difference between these two difference means essentially uh, difference means um, uh, means um, subtraction right it's not addition but subtraction for example what is the difference between five apples and six apples it's only one apple right then how do you how do you how do you find that you have six apples and you have five apples what is the what is the difference between them meaning how large is this number how how essentially how large how larger is this number from this number or how smaller is this number from this number in order to find 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 that out of course you need to subtract meaning you would write the larger number on the top and the smaller number on the bottom and then you subtract 6 minus 5 is equal to 1 apple so the difference between 6 apples and 5 apples is 1 apple right in the exact same way the, di the difference between so many kilometers and so many kilometers you have to subtract starting from the, the greater number which is 8140 kilometers and 2160 kilometers and subtract so then 0 minus 0 is 0 4 minus 6 is you cannot so you have to borrow something from here so this becomes a, a 7 this becomes a 10 plus 1 is 11 and then borrow something from here this becomes a 10 this becomes a 14 14 minus 6 is equal to 8 10 minus 1 is equal to 9, 7 minus 2 is equal to 5 kilometers. So the, this, the difference between these two distances is 5,980 kilometers. And of course, you, when, whenever you solve a problem, you have to take a look at your numbers and the answer that you've gotten in order to make sure that your answer actually does make sense. Meaning that, for example, suppose that I do this calculation over here and I made a mistake right meaning the number came out as for example 2578 for example kilometers right now before I announce this answer as the correct answer I have to take a look at my number and take a look at the numbers that I started with right so these two numbers I started with I can see that essentially if you round the numbers to for example to the to the thousand place to the to the to, to essentially to this place value this number is 8140 so that's around 8000 right this number is 2160 so that's around 2000 so what is the difference between 8,000 and 2,000? It's, it's, it's must, it must be around 6,000. And you see over here, so if this was my answer, this wouldn't be right because it's, it's only about 2,500. But this number is 5,900, which is very close to 6,000, which means that this must be the correct answer, right? So that is basically that means that essentially the answer that you've gotten actually
makes sense okay makes sense mathematically and logically of course so that is basically another part of this question so what essentially what you learn here is that if you want to know what is the total diff the, the distance between essentially between two essentially two points from a to c for example then you have to add the distances if you want if you have essentially one distance over here and what one distance over here and if you, you want to know the this the difference between those, those those two distances then of course you have to do subtraction right now um another interesting thing and useful thing that you can that you can learn from this situation is the is essentially the the concept of uh, speed okay sometimes the essentially the name is given to you as as for example as velocity sometimes it's given to you as velocity sometimes it's given to you as speed technically velocity and speed are not the same things i mean in in essentially among people people essentially might use them interchangeably but they are not essentially in physics they have different definitions but for here as far as we are concerned whether the velocity is given or speed is given essentially loosely they mean the same thing okay the diff the, the the difference essentially the actual this this difference between speed and velocity is that speed is um is basically um it could be in any direction right it could be in any direction but then velocity has a has a specific direction so you have to uh, but but for here again as i mentioned for essentially as here as far as we're concerned there there is no difference okay now the question that has been asked here this the essentially the the fifth part of this question is essentially you want to find the time taken you want to, to find the time taken by the bus by the bus to reach a to b for example right and so from a to b so you want to know essentially what was the time taken by the bus to reach from a to b meaning from here all the way up to here which was 4170 kilometers the distance so the distance was 4170 the distance was 4170 kilometers and if it I mean if 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 only the distance is given to me of course it's not possible for me to decide what was the time taken to cover this distance right I need to have the speed of the bus along that journey so as to be able to to decide basically the the time that the, that the bus took in order to to cover this distance and of course if you essentially if you um if you read the question correctly and attentively you would know that essentially the speed of the bus is taken as 60 kilometers per hour 60 kilometers per hour and what this means is that basically they essentially it is assumed that essentially that the speed of the bus was at all instances of time right at all instances of time meaning all the time the whole time the bus had this exact speed which is 60 kilometers per hour meaning starting from here the speed is 60 kilometers per hour it never changes right which is of course not realistic but just a, just an assumption right it never changes it remains 60 kilometers per hour all the way up to the to the end of the journey which where essentially the bus essentially gets back to the same point okay 
So now if I have these two pieces of information, I can put them together logically in order to decide what was the time taken by the bus to reach from some essentially point A to point B basically. Okay, so now how do I know how to use this in the information that I have? Essentially in, um, in mathematics, you can always use essentially logic, a train of thought. You start your essentially you start your train of thought from some point and then you keep going with that train of thought until you get to essentially whatever it is that you want it's just it just works everywhere as long as you keep going along that train of thought in a logical manner you cannot you cannot go wrong and uh, and of course then you don't have to memorize anything meaning you don't need to memorize any techniques or learn any techniques or, or things like that because you can always use a logical train of thought to get from anywhere to anywhere right so now first of all the there is essentially the way that you form that train of thought is that for example the way that i would do it the way that I would do it in this particular situation. I know that the distance is 4,100, whatever, essentially, di distance. I, I, meaning that I know that I know the distance, right? And the speed has been given to me as 60 kilometers per hour, okay? So I, I understand what the distance represents, meaning essentially the distance there is some point here there is some point here and if you measure this distance using a, 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 a measure stick or essentially a measuring tape or using whatever means then basically the distance you would you would measure it to be for example so many kilometers right so i understand what this represents the speed is um, the speed is, wh what does the speed represent? The speed means how fast something is going, right? And when you say that the speed is 60 kilometers per hour, meaning that you write 60 kilometers, if you write your speed as 60 kilometers per hour, that essentially means that the car is that or essentially the bus is covering a distance of of basically of 60 kilometers in one hour right so there is the one over here which is dropped because it's understood to be there right so that means that the the car covers a speed of 60 kilometers per in one hour meaning that Meaning that in two hours, the distance covered by the by the by the bus is two times sixty kilometers, which is hundred twenty kilometers. If it becomes three hours, then basically the this, the, the the distance covered by the bus is three times sixty kilometers, which is one hundred eighty kilometers, and so on and so forth. So this is essentially a proportion right and this is of course assuming that the, that the, this that the, that the speed remains constant meaning it doesn't keep changing it it just remains a 60 kilometer per hour if that is the case then in one hour the bus has covered the distance of 60 kilometers in two hours twice that distance in three hours thrice that distance and so on and so forth right so now I can use the same proportion in order to know basically how long it took the bus to cover this distance of 4,170 kilometers, right? So I can, I can say that basically 60 kilometers per one hour, which is the speed, the constant speed of the bus, that is the same thing as basically and the distance that I want to know is 4,170 kilometers to how many hours? So that means 60 kilometers to one hour is the same thing as 4,170 kilometers to how many hours? And that's essentially what I'm asking. 
right? And as I explained before, so this is a proportion, right? The way that you can you can essentially solve this proportion if you were to go logically you see that essentially this number over here if you essentially over here i have i have kilometers kilometers hour so this has to be essentially hour as well so the, about the units we have no problems but then you see that this number is 60 times this number because 1 times 60 is 60 which means that this number over here whatever that is if you multiply 60 by that number you should get to this number meaning that that number I'm, I'm going to take it as x and multiply it by 60 that's supposed to be 4170 and that's essentially how you solve the problem now how do i solve this 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 uh, essentially you call this a an equation right so I want to know what x is so I take x times 60 and divide that by 60 is equal to 4170 and divide that by 4000 by by 60 basically and since and I of course I did that on, on purpose because there was a 60 here I wanted to get rid of it right so now 60 and 60 cancel out you have 4170 divided by 60. Again, you can cancel out essentially one zero here, one zero here. It becomes 4, 4, 417 by 6. And 417 by 6, if you do the calculation, is going to be uh, basically 69.5, for example. It's going to be um, basically 69.5. And so essentially, this means that x over here, these are these have been cancelled out, so you can just simply ignore them, is equal to this number 69.5, right? So instead of this number, I can write 69.5 hours, right? So that means that basically, then the essentially the the bus it it basically it um it took it took the bus around 70 hours to cover this distance of 4170 kilometers right around 70 hours now if it and and then basically a proportion you can also basically you can you can solve it in a different way you see over here we have 60 kilometers to one hour is the same thing as 4170 kilometers 4170 kilometers to x right so i can write here the x is going to be equal to essentially you see in front of the x you have essentially across x you have this this number and these two numbers are across one another right so this number is essentially um the x would be equal to this number times this number in the numerator meaning 4170 kilometers times one hour and then and then this number comes to the denominator meaning 60 kilometers now the units these essentially these two units you can cancel out and so again you, you are left with the same, exact same multi, essentially calculation which is 4170 divided by 60 and the unit remains as the hour right so again if you do the if you do the calculation 4170 divided by 60 is the same thing as 69.5 69.5 and then the unit is hours right so that's basically a good example of essentially through essentially these examples you learn many valuable things in in in, in mathematics and then based on that you know how to do other things of course so hopefully this was interesting and useful
in the next video we will take another example